Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and it's finally arrived. It's game week. This weekend the Scottish Premiership will kick off with games on Saturday afternoon and then Sunday afternoon Celtic will start their defence of the Scottish Premiership trophy as they look to make it four in a row. A lot has been asked if Celtic have done their preparation in the right manner for this season coming up. We'll talk about that today and a few other things. Strap yourselves in. It's time for a new season. If you haven't already, please make sure to go down below, hit like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated. We're trying to get towards 50,000 subscribers this year and we have just past the 45,000 subscriber mark you guys are the absolute best thank you all so much we're halfway to 50k your support in the past month has been and I'm not exaggerating when I say this has quite literally been the best the channel has ever seen we have gained almost 1200 subscribers alone in the month of June which is just unreal we've never done that before so Patting the back to you guys, um, tomorrow the Celtic away shirt is out officially so check in with me tomorrow and we'll announce some details for a giveaway or two to give back to you. Um, but we've got a few things to talk about ahead of the first game of the season, let's do that. Um, yeah, we're all over the place. So as briefly mentioned in the introduction to the video, Celtic kick off their season this Sunday against Kilmarnock in the Scottish Premiership at Celtic Park. It's flag day. Celtic celebrate winning three in a row as we look to make it four in a row. It's as simple as that. It's a league title this season which Celtic should be winning. Um, and I feel like we are in for an entertaining season. A lot has been asked about whether or not Celtic have prepared in the correct manner going into the 2024-25 campaign. The transfer window has been dry, to say the least, and Celtic are still to make one outfield signing. We've brought in two goalkeepers, Kasper Schmeichel and Viljami Sinsalo, as we know, but the rest of the side, the rest of the squad, has been neglected. We're still waiting on Paolo Bernardo to be announced officially as a Celtic player. Adamida has stalled. We don't know what's happening with that. There's not been an update in weeks. Left back, still waiting for an improvement. Centre halves still waiting an improvement and everywhere else just stands still. So this is now the point where Celtic fans' impatience has come to light more than it has in the last few weeks. With days to go until the Scottish Premiership season starts, the board deserve to be questioned. There is absolutely no doubt about that. Now, I, I think me personally as a Celtic fan, I I'm sitting at a point right now where I'm okay, I'm confident. Uh, both for the season ahead and for the rest of the transfer window. I do believe that Brendan Rodgers will get the signings he wants between now and the end of that window, but the the frustration is more than justified. There's no two ways about it. And I think that I'm mostly confident down to the fact that Rangers are in the state that they're in. We're quite lucky in the sense that Rangers are in a mess just now, which has allowed Celtic to maybe take this transfer window with a little bit more... I don't know, I, I don't want to sound disrespectful in any way, but Celtic have been able to take it a little bit more chill. They've been able to stand back and, and, and kind of just let things happen as Rangers try and get themselves together. But any other year right now, you know, there could be protests outside Celtic Park. So we are kind of riding our luck a little bit in that regard, I would say. The fact of the matter is, Celtic still have a squad that's more than good enough of both A, beating Rangers and B, winning the league. Still more than good enough, but the fact that we are heading into the first game of the season without first team players coming through the door in the outfield areas, being two players light in Adam Eda and Paolo Bernardo, it does beg the question of what's been going on. Why is it taking so long? So, yeah, it's a big few weeks for Celtic. We've got to start the season well. We've played extremely well in pre-season with the wins over DC United, Manchester City and Chelsea. It's now about translating those performances into the opening few league games. Listen, I think ultimately what you're looking at is if Celtic win every game between now and the end of the transfer window and they also make the signings they need to make, Come September 1st, we'll all be buzzing, we'll all be happy and we'll forget about how long it took Celtic to sign players. But if things don't go that way, then God, the board are really banking on um, a lot of good things because it could turn negative so quickly. We know what it's like up here. 
of course all week we'll be here on the channel to preview the opening stages of the season the first weekend of the season so stick with me we have a few stories to run over today mostly that concern players who could leave Celtic and links with players to other clubs so let's jump through some of them it's still very early days to talk in depth about Sunday's game against Kilmarnock but don't worry that will be coming soon so last night we got an exclusive from Stephen McGowan of the Daily Mail detailing that there is interest from the English Premier League in Celtic star Rio Hitati. This was the headline broke by him, an exclusive that Leicester City are poised to move for Celtic star Rio Hitati. The article went on to say that Leicester City are weighing up a big money offer for Celtic's Japanese midfielder Rio Hitati, preparing for an imminent return to the English Premier League. Steve Cooper wants to add to his creative options in midfield, and while a bid is yet to go in, Celtic are aware of of Leicester's interest. The Parkhead club kicked out an approach for Hatati from Russian side Zenit St. Petersburg earlier this month. So Rio Hatati, someone who has avoided the headlines this summer, bar that late mention there of Zenit St. Petersburg, um, is now coming into the headlines with Leicester City reportedly interested in his services. Uh, Rio Hatati is someone we can't afford to lose in this window should Matt O'Reilly move on. Listen, I don't want to lose O'Reilly or Hitati. It's as simple as that. If it was up to me, I would be keeping both of them. And I think with a month to go, it's looking likely we could see it, definitely at least one of them stay. But there is always a chance that both of them stay with the, the days kind of going thin in this window. We we don't have a long time left. O'Reilly really should have been gone by now, you'd think. I, I expected him to be gone by now, but he's still here. And I'm not complaining. However, Leicester City are enjoying looking at Rio Hitati, which, yeah, on the surface is quite scary, it's quite terrifying, you don't want to lose a player like Rio, but, um, you, you know, he's going to have interest, he's a, a top, top player, and he's somebody who would fit right into the Premier League, he'd fit right into Leicester City's starting 11, I would imagine, so, this is one that Celtic will have to look at, but don't worry, it's not the end of the world, certainly not D-Day yet, it has been reported across several different articles and stories that have broke in the last few weeks, that real Hitati won't be allowed to leave Celtic should Matt O'Reilly leave the club. Now, I know you can't guarantee these things in football and, and things can change at the drop of a pin, but Rio Hitati just can't leave in the same window. It would cause significant damage to our midfield if both of them were to go in the one window. Um, so I don't think the club would have any interest of letting them go for any price this summer unless it was a significantly high bid unless it was a bid that would just be unrejectable you know 40 50 million pounds and maybe the club would go right okay we'll let you go real but they can't let both of them go in this window and i'm pretty confident they won't let both of them go um the real hitati is someone who i think is here for one more year at least uh and, and i think the club will make that a, a priority he did sign a new contract last summer as well so celtic are in control uh, and, and listen, I don't think, as, as clear as Rio Hitati's made it in his career that he wants to make it to the Premier League, he wants to make it to the very top, I don't think he'll be in any rush to move to Leicester City this summer should they submit a bid. Um, like he's got another chance of European football here, another year of good development in that midfield under Brendan Rodgers. His relationship with Brendan Rodgers seems really, really good. I, I don't think that Leicester City's a move that's going to make him jump the gun. Uh, so I, I think we're okay. We need to wait to see if news comes in surrounding an actual bid from the English side. But for now, interest is there and we could hear of something from them very, very soon. In the same article, we also get details surrounding the futures of Celtic centre-half Stephen Welsh and Gustav Lagerbelka. Both players could be set to leave the club this summer. Uh, at the end of that article, Stephen McGowan said that central defenders Gustav Lagerbelka and Stephen Welsh could go out in search of first-team football with Belgian club Mechelen, one of the clubs keen to take Stephen Welsh on loan. Uh, Stephen Welsh, obviously, earlier in this window was reported as one of the players Celtic were ready to offload. It was basically set in stone that he was leaving the club but nothing came from that. We heard there was interest in both America and the English Championship. No bids came in, no bids were accepted but now apparently aside in Belgium, Mechelen as mentioned, are looking at the possibility of taking him on loan. Could be a decent move when you consider the moves that some other Scottish players have got to the Belgian Pro League. 
and Gustav Lagerbilke is someone who the manager has actually commented on first hand complimenting his great attitude and discussing that field move to the Lecce back in January now Gustav Lagerbilke has been in a really peculiar position since joining Celtic last summer we all know that uh, he came in uh, and then very quickly was put to the side really and we heard very early on that Brendan Rodgers didn't really want him around but Rodgers complimented Gustav Lagerbilke his comments uh, in the Daily Record he said this that it's all all just depends uh, Gus has shown a terrific attitude he didn't get so much game time last season but he's got his head down he had the chance to go out on loan in January but we needed to keep him due to the injuries we had in that position but he's worked very hard over pre-season and uh, we'll see what happens. So, uh, Brendan Rodgers, sounding like he's a fan of Gustav Lagerbilke, and I never for a minute doubted that there was a good relationship between the two, but it just seemed like a move that Brendan Rodgers never really was in for in the first place that was made by the recruitment team. And, uh, you know, he, he probably wants to just get the boy playing football. So, according to Stephen McGowan, those two players could move out of the club this summer, potentially in a loan capacity, it's good, we need to trim the dead wood of the side. Welsh and Lagerbilk, and both of them don't really have a place. Even when you put out that map of squad depth, you know, we've got Vickers, we've got Scales, we've got Navrovsky, we're looking to bring in another centre-half. What happens beyond those four? Do Welsh and Lagerbilk see much football? Probably not, so it is for the best that they probably move on. Before I wrap things up and get into the last wee details of today's video, I know what you want to ask in the comments section. I know what the most pressing issue is. What is happening with signings? Where are the signings? And when will, when will we hear more? Honestly, I don't know. Uh, and I continuously ask this same question. But if you're wondering why there's very little out there in the mainstream and in the daily records and in the daily mails and on social media... It's because there's very little going about in general. I've heard nothing. I've seen nothing. I know as much as you at this point. The Adam Eda deal has gone really, really quiet. In fact, there was a story that popped up today on Twitter that a couple of Italian sides are looking at the possibility of signing Adam Eda. So if Celtic want to get that deal done, they need to move back in and they need to move back in fast and they need to take it more seriously. Um, Paolo Bernardo should be announced in the coming days. I, I was assuming tonight and it still could be tonight. But of course, the squad are still travelling back from America, so it might come when that's all done and dusted. Um, yeah, we just need to be patient, and I know that's what I've been saying all window, but gen that's all you can say, genuinely. That's it. You've got to be patient. Can't force stories out of nowhere. Um, frustrating, yes, I know, but don't shoot the messenger. So last wee update for today's video, in case you happened to miss it, the League Cup last 16 draw was done yesterday, which seen Celtic drawn against Hibernian and their tie. It will take place at Celtic Park on the 17th of August, so it's directly a week after we played them at Easter Road in the league. So we'll be playing Hibs back-to-back -back very early on this season. It's a tough draw for Celtic. We should be winning at Celtic Park. It's as simple as that, but... Maybe uh, you want a, an easier tie than Hibs when it comes to the last 16. Should still be getting through nonetheless. And when we have a full kickoff time and TV details uh, published, we will get back to you on that. But for now, all you need to know is 17th of August, Celtic Park is Celtic against Hibs. Right, that does it for today then. Uh, not too much in the news, but it's all about preparation for Sunday's game against Kilmarnock now. Um, buzzing for the season to begin uh, hopefully we start off with a bang but we'll get into that as the week progresses if you have enjoyed today's video please make sure to hit like and subscribe once again thank you all for 45,000 subscribers enjoy the rest of your evening, God bless and I'll see you all next time